This prosthodontics video will cover the 3x5 fixed partial denture preparation. This procedure follows the 2022 8x guidelines for the gold 3x metal ceramic 5 preparation for the Typodont exam. This video is intended to help you pass your 8x exam, but remember to refer to the preparation manual for further clarification. Assemble the armamentarium as shown here on the screen. As a tip, it's helpful to measure the diameter of your burrs in order to use the burrs for depth grooves in subsequent steps. Practice with the same burr type that you intend to use for the exam. Even if you get a new burr for the exam, this will allow the procedure to be as repeatable as possible and therefore cut down the chances of error. To begin, fabricate two putty indices to be used as reduction guides. To fabricate the putty, mix half a scoop of base with half a scoop of accelerator. Knead until the color of the putty is uniform and all streaks have disappeared. Adapt the putty to cover the labial and lingual surfaces of the tooth, as well as the corresponding surfaces of at least one adjacent tooth. Allow the putty to polymerize for approximately two minutes, or according to the manufacturer's instructions. Remove the putty and section the indices. As a tip, ADEX recommends making buccal lingual and occlusal cervical reduction guides, but you can make as many as you would like to help with checking reduction from multiple angles. Always follow the specifications in your exam booklet for the reduction guides. For the buccal lingual index, cut the index in half buccal lingually, sagittally, across number 5 and number 3. For the incisal cervical index, cut along the occlusal surface to separate the index into a labial and a lingual half. As a tip, make sure your putty is of the teeth that you will be prepping on your Acadental Typodont for the ADEX exam. Each Typodont tooth is slightly different. For this reason, when you change out the teeth, make a new set of matrices specific to the exact teeth you are using. Do not recycle old matrices, as they may be inaccurate. As a tip, start by performing your gross reduction of number 5. Once you've performed the number 5 gross reduction, move on to the number 3 gross reduction. Leave tooth structure to allow for final refinement and taper correction to create a coincident path of draw between the teeth, which should be performed after both gross reductions have been performed. As a note, we've placed red utility wax in the Edentulus number 4 site. While not used here for visibility purposes, we recommend using water cooling during this procedure to prevent the burning of acadental teeth. Once we've completed the putty indices, we can move on to the crown preparation, starting with the occlusal reduction on tooth number 5. Orient the burr perpendicular to the long axis of the tooth and parallel to the edge of the occlusal surface. Create depth grooves at 1.5 to 1.8 mm depth. This allows for the additional loss of tooth structure during reduction and finishing. Then, join the depth grooves together. Remove any roughness left by the grooves. Burr options include coarse to medium grit, chamfer, and tapered diamond burrs. Remember, however, that the acadental teeth are soft, so really avoid coarse grit unless you have a tendency to under-prep. Also, preparations for PFM crowns vary depending on how many surfaces will be veneered with porcelain. Those areas will require deeper reduction than the portions of the tooth covered with metal alone. The instructions for this PFM prep assume that the buccal and occlusal surfaces will be veneered with porcelain, while the lingual surface will only be overlaid with metal. For the lingual portion of the occlusal reduction, create depth grooves at 1.5 to 1.8 mm depth. You should create three parallel to the lingual occlusal inclines. Join the depth grooves together. Burr options include coarse to medium grit, chamfer, and tapered diamond burrs. Compare your reduction against the Fuckle Lingual Reduction Guide and use your probe to measure. The final occlusal reduction is 2 mm, but it is unnecessary to reduce the full 2 mm at this step, 
as you should leave some room for additional reduction during the finishing steps. Moving on to the buckle reduction of number 5, create 1mm depth grooves in two different planes. For the occlusal portion, it should follow the normal buckle contour. Here you should make three depth grooves, one at the center of the buckle surface, and one at the mesiobuckle and distobuckle line angles respectively. For the cervical portion, it should be parallel to the long axis of the tooth. You should make two depth grooves here, one in between the center and mesiobuckle depth groove, and one between the center and distobuckle depth groove. The position of the tip of the diamond rotary instrument should be 0.5 mm super gingerly, as this can be used to help guide the height of the margin location in subsequent steps. Then, join the depth grooves together. Burr options include coarse to medium grit chamfer and tapered diamond burrs. There should be a taper towards the gingival margin so that your reduction tapers to meet the 1 to 1.5 mm buckle margin. Then, create a chamfer margin. This margin should be between 1 and 1.5 mm wide. Maintain a lip of enamel on the proximal surfaces to protect the adjacent teeth from damage. The chamfer margin should be 0.5 mm supragingival in height. The final buckle reduction is 1.5 mm with dual planes. Compare your reduction to the buckle lingual reduction guide using the probe to measure. Moving to the proximal reduction, Orient the burr parallel to the long axis of the tooth on the buckle surface. Penetrate the tooth from the buckle and move the burr lingually in a sawing motion, carefully avoiding the adjacent teeth. Burr options include long needle or flame-shaped coarse or median grit diamond burrs to avoid damaging the adjacent tooth or over-reducing the proximal surface. Retain an enamel shell of the proximal tooth structure to protect the adjacent teeth during this tooth preparation. Optionally, you can break this shell using a hand instrument. Hand instrument options include a hoe or a hatchet. Next to the edentulous number 4 site on the distal surface, create a smooth transition from the buckle reduction to the proximal surface. You do not have to worry about protecting the adjacent tooth at this site, because there is none. On the mesial proximal surface, create a smooth transition from the buckle to the interproximal reduction. In doing so, you will create a smooth chamfer margin. The chamfer margin should be 0.5 to 1 mm interproximally, and the margin height should be 0.5 mm super gingival. Ensure that the proximal wall tapers are approximately parallel or less than or equal to 12 degrees per wall. Compare your reduction against the occlusal cervical reduction guide using the probe to measure. To watch the rest of this video and more videos like it, check out mydentalkey.com.